Our third speaker in, uh, in this forum is Doug LeBlanc, the president of DLS Group. DLS Group was founded by Doug in 1996 after he completed a successful 22-year career in the Canadian military. Throughout his military career and now with his own private firm, Doug has been an innovator, developing highly effective equipment and protocols that continue to set the benchmark in the remediation industry. He's completed over 6,500 environmental projects in his career. And Doug, I, I just want to indicate, has also um, helped make it possible for a number of people to be here today who couldn't otherwise uh, maybe afford to be here, and we appreciate Doug's contribution. Come up, Doug. <clears throat> But when she said there was an elephant in the room, I thought she was pointing at me. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know, a sense of humor. Well, there was a lot of academics here. There was a lot of theory. But I'm practical. I'm a guy that does it. So uh, a lot of rules and regulations, and people sit behind desks, and they think about it, and somebody has to go do it. Well, I'm one of the guys that, that does it. So. We got involved in this, and I want to thank you very much. Uh, the clicker here, which way to make this work. I'm not a techie guy. Yeah, I know where it is. Yeah, I see it there. The thing is, is that we got involved in uh, soils at the Green Bank Airport because of uh, Lake Ridge. We were involved by testing because there had to be an independent third party to go testing between the proponent, the Ministry of Environment, and the township. And DL Services is one of the contractors that has been, that was successful in getting the five-year contract to work with the Ministry of Environment. They can award us contracts directly and work right beside them and give us stuff. So we're independent. Uh, we don't tender jobs. If you want to tender a job, go in the yellow pages. If you want it done right, that's what I've always tell. You hire DL Services and you pay to have it done right. Okay? You'll see a picture here of the Green Bank Airport, which is there. The next thing you see is basically the soil recycling facilities in the province of Ontario. The ones that are highlighted in orange and blue are the ones I own. All the ones in black are all around the GPA, GTA. <clears throat> I built them because I believed in recycling contaminated soil and not sending it to landfill and not being part of the leachate. A week ago, I was asked to go look at a landfill that's looking for a new play, a permit that was closed down because they, were, they exhausted their fill. So I asked them, I said, what are you applying for? They're applying for a landfill, new line for permit. Are you going to use contaminated soil? Oh, no. We don't then take contaminated soil because we did that mistake the first time, and it ended up by closing us down and filling us too quick. And basically, uh, we had a huge leachate problem. So I said, what are you going to do with the new one? He says, we're going to segregate it, just use it on the top so that the rainwater can touch it and let it leach all the way down. And they don't even have a, a leachate management, uh, management system involved. Anyway. So I wanted to recycle soil and do it right. As we were recycling soil, it was bringing in bacteria into, into uh, the province. And I found out that we have our own biodegraders, and nobody had found them because they were using natural attenuation. So we're working with the University of um, Winnipeg and Carlos over here. Want to stand up, Carlos? Right over there. Want to stand up? He's right there. He's uh, a student that we have, an engineer doing his master's degree in environmental re remediation. And we developed with the University of Winnipeg the seven biodegraders in the province in Canada to be used, but we still in, in import invasive species to do bioremediation. So when we look at regulations and CFAs that have been issued out, and they're still issuing CFAs for invasive species in this province. So <clears throat> the next thing that we found there was a problem, there was no way to treat heavy metals in the province. So we did a study with the Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Transport, National Resource Council of Canada, one of my facilities at Moose Creek. We all were founders into it. We ended up with the, with the uh, properties till 2030. It treats heavy metals and road salts. It's in the province and we're getting the first CFA issued in Dorchester for the problem. And that's one of the issues with contaminated soil. How do you deal with the metals? The metals? That was the elephant in the room that's dealt with. All right. <coughs> The other one I was going to talk about was the draft best management practice for soil. I look at it as my four-year-old son. I walk into my neighbor's house and I say, don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch this. And I walk. 
my son looks around and he says, ah, dad didn't say this. And he goes and does it. The best management practice, the way that they have it, I believe it's going to open a little bit of Pandora's box. Because they put a lot on the QPs. And if you look at the QPs in the Ministry of Environment, and you look at the definition of an engineer, he's supposed to say, stay in his field of designated studies. And if you look at 80% of them that are QPs, qualified QPs, electrical, structural, asphalt, computer, computer programming, they have very little knowledge on the environmental, but they're QPs, and they can say where the soil goes. Anyway, so I also put this definition in adverse effect because I was involved in a conference call with a little bit of politics, and this is a little bit of a joke for one individual. I actually put the definition of adverse effect there because everybody was speaking at it, about it. And it isn't only for human beings, but it's for everything, aquatic life, animals, plants, and for us. Because we seem to use, we breathe, we dilute everything in our air. We want to eat food. We put all kinds of pesticides herbicides in our soils. And then what do we do? You use water that we need to drink, and we're almost water. We use it for diluting everything that we want. So when we look at industrial development, we also got to look at we have to live as a, as a human race. All right. <clears throat> Some of the definitions, so I went in there a little bit faster. I got to go through that one. Now, the inconsistency of testing. If I put a clear glass and I put a little bit of Kool-Aid in it, it's all going to go yellow or blue. If I have the same volume and I put the same volume of Kool-Aid in soil, the rest of the soil is not going to turn blue, only what it touches and what it's absorbed to. So when you do soil sampling for metals or hydrocarbons, it's very inconsistent. And this gentleman over here in the white shirt that stood up with the white hair, he knows that. Very inconsistent. That was one of the things that Skugog had and that the councillors had when they asked me and they grilled me for an hour and 45 minutes in front of town council. And it wasn't a lame council, I'll tell you that, because <laughs> I was there. The newspaper said it was quite, quite drilling. But we answered all their questions and they gave us a unanimous vote. They had confidence in the, in the individual there. It's totally inconsistent. They don't have a program. You gotta look at it. Mercury is known as a, as a neurotoxin, but if you have mercury in soil, it'll never fail a leachate test. It'll always pass. What's the problem with the testing? You take benzene in, at all your gas stations. I, we do probably 40, 50 gas stations a year that the consultants bring to us. It never fails a T-clip. Why? There's problems in the testing program. Even though it's the best that we got and what the, the world has, there's problems with it. It has to be dealt with. All right. Now, environment, then we're going to go, now we're going to the airport on testing. So that's, we had to get a conference. Selection of a contractor for this. Broad spectrum environmental remediation, which I have, from radioactive waste to DDT. They don't make DDT anymore, so that tells you how old I am and how to remediate it. Another problem that they have in the Ministry of Environment, they have two bodies. When you do something, if you have a spill, who's responding, the TSSA or the Ministry of Environment? It should be one body, the Ministry of Environment. TSSA should stay the elevators, whatever they are, <laughs> compressors, heating plants. The Ministry of Environment should be responsible for the environmental. This memorandum of understanding should be gone. Since I have a forum, I'll use it, okay? All right. They should have C of A's and approvals. A fill site should have a C of A and approval. If they require the C of A and approval, a lot of this would be done. Checks and balances. A fill site shouldn't be just an open landfill. They should be made to follow the same rules. Air, water, groundwater, which way froze, any receptors that it's going to affect, and the public and the roads. We're just there for the soils. And I know that Green Bank is building an airport because I saw the, the designs done by Genevar. That's why I'm involved. It's not just going to be a field project. The next thing that I was involved with was Walkerton. And with Walkerton in the inquiry, to develop Regulation 903. The ministry put that in there to make sure anybody that sampled groundwater or soils below one meter, a meter and a half, would have a 903 license. You know how many companies or individuals have a 903 license? You're shaking your head. You know it too, right? Very few. And they're easy to catch. They all, they all, they all put in their, their, uh, their reports. They don't have it. They shouldn't be doing the work. Right? You hire an electrician, you make sure it's a license, like home to home, to make sure they give you a certificate and insurance. Work extravagant protocol in the township for sites. They do. Environmental insurance. 
make sure to consult it as insurance. What does homes a home say? If he can't show you the insurance or the license, don't hire the guy. And you've got to understand what insurance is. Most of them will give you a claims mail policy. It's not, written to, it's not worth the paper it's written on. If you're a municipality, you want an occurrence policy. That means that anything that happens, you're covered for over two to 300 years. And make sure that that insurance company will indemnify the city like we did with $30 million worth of coverage. So if I make a mistake, they're covered. They don't have to use their own funds for a lawyer. They don't have to take Toronto soil, bring it into Stugog, if it ends up a mess, being hit on the, on the taxpayers to be cleaned up. Or pay their legal fees like it cost them over two, 300,000. That's our insurance policy. Demand that the contractor has an occurrence policy and that it indemnifies the party that are responsible. That means he's got skin in the game. Because if he messes up, he won't be able to get insurance again. Now we're going to get to the Green Bank Hydrogeology. The hydrogeologist, I'm glad you looked at the site and you have better pictures than I have. This is the airport. In the airport, if you look at it, it looks flat, but it isn't. It's sloped, and it's sloped like this. I don't like flying anymore. I flew all around the world. But the thing is, if I'm going to land on a plane, I like the runway to be flat. <laughs> right? So if people want to know why it's bringing up so much fill, it's to straighten out the low of the land. There's a lot of dead land, a lot of dead ground, and it has to be straightened out and brought up. And you should be above the road and have a, and have a distance to land. And, it's, and a lot of people want to come here because they're closing up a lot of municipal airports around the cities and towns. And it's a good source of industry. Because industry will come where they can land, where executives can land, as long as Obama doesn't put a tax on their jets. Then you have your slope of the ground, which goes south. Here we have a stormwater management plan, and we sample all of the soils. We just started the project. We just got a temporary fill. We're working with the Ministry of Transport now, and we will get a permanent fill permit, hopefully, by the 17th of March. And the 17th of March means there's only 400 trucks a day. There's a limit. Not 700 trucks waiting at the gate to dump that morning, or 2,000 or 3,000 trucks in a day coming to some of these facilities that come here. We have to review all sites, phase one, phase twos, and all reports from all other QPs. They must sign the documentation that the information they gave us is correct, and if it isn't, they're liable. We'll take them in front of the QP, the PEO society, and they give us a copy of the insurance, and they allow us to go sample the source site. We have to go to the source site and sample it. We also wanted to sample all the wells of all the homeowners, down Reagan. We went there, we sampled them, we gave them notice. Only two out of 10 allowed us to go on their property. Out of, and one of them we found the well was highly contaminated before we even started to set up a background. And basically, we told them not to bathe their child in it where it was high nitrogen content. We didn't want blue baby to take place. So which was good about it. We'd like to sample the other eight, but we have to have permission to go on board. How we sample the soil and how we take care of it. We've developed our own computer system and GPS system and tracking system for every load and every source site. So once it's done, we do our sampling. We say we can put it in. We can come back at any time if there's a problem and find that source site because it's all GPSed in and as it's GPSed in, the QP or is, or is represented on site, it downloads it immediately into the computer. So we can go find it at any time. It's not like uh, we think it's here, we think it's there. With the town, they held us to a strict regime, but a protocol, it's right there. The other thing that Mr. Corrigan, the counselors wanted was a PhD program, which is funded on this from the University of Carleton. We just got the draft the other day and with some of the steering committee, there's gonna be a PhD working on the site, engineer, master's degree with his PhD, doing it on this site, on soil sampling and groundwater sampling. That's the transparency. And it's controlled, funded by us, but, fu but controlled by the city. So we know where everything is. We developed our own software, which costs us a lot. We sample the trucks, we come up with a protocol, we go sample the source sites. The problem that we've had, am I getting close? Oh, better go. <laughs> the thing that we did, we did here on a tracking system, you can see the laboratory tracking, we track all the labs, we post it, but then under privacy, we can only post numbers. But if they actually want to see the address and where the source sites come from, they have to go to Ian from the town and go, and go see him because the town has all the addresses where everything comes from. We have turned down 10 sites of, since we were there 
and the sites couldn't go to a solar recycling facility, it was too bad, didn't come to this site, didn't go to a landfill, but went to one of the other, one of the other sites that were mentioned in these presentations. I hope I didn't do anything wrong with that one, John, did I? No, I, I brought my lawyer here, so he's here. <laughs> and we control all the source sites and we make the QPs accountable for the source sites. It's one of the things that we do. And they allow us to sample. If they don't allow us to do that, we don't go. Tracking all the soil, everything's done with a GPS. Take all the aggregate. We use accredited labs, and sometimes we have to do split labs, split samples. How the lab result, how it's all changed by summary. Notification alert if we have anything, any problems at all. We let the town know, and it has to be removed and dealt with immediately and gone. Reportings, we have, our, we have our quarterly meetings, and we have those with them. Uh, Carmela now has asked to join the steering committee, and she's getting on to I'm glad after listening to her speak. She's very well-rounded. She knows what's going on. She's got her head on straight. She'll help us out. We're audible. We got audits. We're audited all the time, and we're not afraid of it. This is the Green Bank Airport, how it goes. Thank you very much. So that's as quick as I can go, and I hope I uh, didn't uh, bore you too much. Thank you very much. <laughs>